One simple truth is the key to solving the puzzle of the world. Hi, I'm Alec McClellan with Josh Medell Ministry. This is a jigsaw guide to life. I remember the day I came home from work and it was when our kids were younger and Sophia, our eldest daughter, was playing at home and she was working on a jigsaw puzzle. So as I walked past Sophia, I almost uh, absentmindedly said, Sophia, I wonder what the picture is. And without missing a beat, she said, Dad, it's Cinderella. Well, I stopped in my tracks, turned around and walked back to Sophia because I realised this was what parents call a teachable moment. And as parents know, teachable moments, they don't come around as often as we'd like. You see, Sophia had stumbled on something that could change her life. She'd stumbled on the key to solving the puzzle of the world. I said, Sophia, you can't be sure you you haven't finished the puzzle. She looked up at me and kind of with a curious expression, she said, Dad, it's Cinderella. I've got enough pieces in place. Sophia had stumbled on the fact that when it comes to a jigsaw puzzle, if you want to see the big picture, you don't need every single piece of the puzzle. And that translates and transfers into the real world. Since it's not a huge stretch to see the world in life like a jigsaw puzzle, the biggest jigsaw puzzle of them all, this world is broken. Life is confusing. We know we're never going to find all the answers. But like a jigsaw puzzle, if you want to see the big picture... You don't need every single piece of a puzzle in place. You don't need to know everything to know the truth. That is huge when it comes to looking at life and looking for answers. I've taught about the jigsaw puzzle for many years in many different countries to people of all ages and stages. And it's so helpful because even a young child can grasp it and understand it. And it's cross-cultural. You can travel anywhere in the world and people know what a jigsaw is. They, They know how it works almost intuitively. It actually taps into something in the field of philosophy called epistemology. Epistemology is a branch of philosophy that focuses on the area of knowledge. What do we know? How do we know it? How do we know that we know? And many questions that follow from that. And the jigsaw taps into something in a very simple way that there are things that we know. How do we know it? What are the reasons? What is the justification? Well, there's pieces that just seem to stand out and snap into place. We don't have all the pieces, but we can see the big picture. And the jigsaw illustrates it beautifully. You don't need to know everything to be confident you know the truth. Well, when we talk about jigsaw puzzles and using this as a tool to interacting with the world around us, life's big questions, one of the things that comes with a jigsaw puzzle is the box. And on the box is a picture. That picture is very important because that picture represents what the puzzle ought to look like. It gives you a sneak preview And it serves as a guide to steer you in the right direction. That picture on the box has a direct correspondence to the broken puzzle pieces, helping you snap them into place. It's your guide. Well, when we look at life and when we look at this world, people use the term world view, which describes how we view the world. And a world view, if you like, is like the picture on the box. It's what represents how we look at life and see the big picture. Now, everybody has a worldview, whether or not they realise what that worldview is, but it acts as a guide to help us with life, to understand it, to snap the broken pieces back into place. It's how we look at life and see the big picture. Well, every religion is a picture on the box. And in Christianity, what do you think the picture on the box is? What represents life's big picture? What is given to us to act as our guide, to steer us in the right direction? Well, the answer is the Bible. The Bible is 
the picture on the box. Just as in other competing religions, uh, whether it was Buddhism or Hinduism or Islam, they also have uh, instructions, they have a guide to life from their own scriptures, their own tradition, that makes a claim on how the world is, how we ought to navigate life. And with the picture on the box, within different religions, they make different claims, competing claims, claims that contradict each other. Therefore, they cannot all be true. They could all be false, but they cannot all be true. Well, which guide is the right guide? Which is the right picture on the box? Well, imagine there was a mix-up in a factory that created jigsaw puzzles. And imagine you had all the pieces of a puzzle, but you had different pictures on the box available. How would you know which is the right box? You start doing the puzzle. And as you fit those pieces together, you would see it would start to correspond with the right guide, the right picture on the box. As Christians, we're responsible to share what we believe and why we believe it. And very often we can talk to people and we can talk to them about the Bible as our guide to life, how we can make sense of this world. But some people that we talk to, particularly in the world today, have no interest or respect in the Bible. They don't want to hear what it has to say because they believe things about the Bible that have turned them off. They've already uh, have an idea that this is something that is untrustworthy. It's not a reliable source. So how can we have a conversation with these people? Well, instead of focusing on the box, we can focus on some of the broken pieces, how they fit those pieces together. It's another way to take people in the right direction. If we can look at some of life's broken pieces, imagine if you had the pieces of the puzzle, you would start snapping them into place and as the picture started to emerge, you could point to the right box. That is something that we can do today when we look at life. We can look at some of life's broken pieces and we can start to snap them into place and then show how they correspond to a particular box, how they correspond to the Bible. I love doing this with people. Uh, one of the easy ways you can do this is when you look at this broken world that we live in and you ask one of the most fundamental questions. Where did it all come from? How did we get this universe? And it always boggles my mind when some people will study uh, a scientific approach to understanding where the world came from and they say, well, the world came from nothing. I had a conversation with someone a number of years ago where I tried to establish how can you get something from nothing? Doesn't make sense. The Bible helps us clear up that confusion. We're looking at the broken pieces. We know we have something. We know that something doesn't come from nothing. Something must come from something or someone. Well, we look at the picture on the box, we look at the Bible. What does it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We have an explanation, we have a cause for the universe, for the world, for everything that we see. God created it. And that would be an example of looking at the broken pieces, how they fit together, how they steer us in the right direction, and how they correspond with a particular picture on the box. That is the Bible. Well, there's another one. You could think about, for example, the problem of human trafficking today in the world. This is something that people recognise, they understand. They don't dismiss human trafficking as a lifestyle choice or just a career option. They say this ought not to be. This is something we should not do. We should not take advantage of the weak and vulnerable members of our society for our own selfish ends. We should not do that. Therefore, they're implicitly assuming there's a way the world ought to be. The world's not just random, it's not just we can live it any way that we want. This is a way that we ought to live, by respecting individuals, valuing their lives. And so how do we make sense of that? These are how we fit the pieces together that human beings are worthy of respect and value. Well, these are the pieces fitting together and we can look at boxes and we look at the Bible, which is a picture on the box that says that's what we should expect. That's how you fit those pieces together. Why? Well, the Bible says God created this world and God created people. He created human beings and he made them special. He made them in his image. He gave them a mind to think, emotions to feel, a will to make decisions. We are made in the image of God. Every person is stamped with absolute value. 
It's another example of looking at the broken pieces, how they fit together, how they steer us in the right direction, and how they have correspondence with the Bible as a picture on the box. And all the times that we do this, what are we doing? We're showing people the Bible is the right guide, the right guide to life, the right way to make sense of the world, the right way to make sense of others, the right way to make sense of ourselves. The Bible stands apart from every other religious book out there. It actually tells us the story of human history. It begins at the beginning. It tells us that we're valuable. It tells us where we came from. It tells us why we're here. It talks about the middle. What is our longing for, for love and relationship now? It comes from the fact we're created for a relationship with God and that's what we're looking for. That's what we're longing for. It also tells us the end of the story, how things finish, how things end up and how that this life always seems short. We want to live longer because God created us to live forever. These are pieces that fit together. They correspond with the Bible that is the guide to life that tells us where we came from, why we're here, where we're going. All reasons to believe this is the right guide, the right picture on the box. Now, we will never find all the answers. Every belief system, whether it's in a religion or a philosophy or an ideology, everybody has to live by faith because we'll never find all the answers. And faith fills in the gaps where reason falls short. Reason will always fall short. But the Christian faith is not a blind faith. You keep your eyes open. You have reasons to believe. Reasons why we believe that Christianity is true. I remember I was teaching a class on this subject a number of years ago and a lady was attending the class. Her name was Betty. Betty was 90 years old. And she was attending the class. She wasn't a Christian. And she said, Alec, this is so helpful to me. The idea about the jigsaw. Because I always thought I couldn't commit to anything until I had all the answers. I said, Betty, I hear that a lot. I understand. You could live another 90 years. You still wouldn't have all the answers. What is your goal in life? Not to know everything, but to see the big picture. To have enough pieces that stand out, snap into place. Over the course of the class, Betty got to the point where she could look at life and see the big picture. And she was ready to trust in the truth and place her trust in Jesus Christ. And she was baptised a short time afterward. What a joy to see Betty knowing, you know what? You don't need to know everything to know the truth. But the Christian faith is a reasonable faith. We can show how pieces stand out and fit together. And when we have those reasons to believe in our own life, it gives us confidence because that's just our responsibility, not to make anyone believe anything, but to share the reason why we believe with love and with gentleness and respect. But with the things that we share, when they ring true, when they resonate with reality, they will be attractive and persuasive to other people too. So what I want you to take away from this is remember the simple tool about the ordinary jigsaw puzzle, giving you reasons why you believe and reasons why you can share your belief with others. 